My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer America. Other people might want to make some friends. I'm just trying to make you money. My job, not just entertain, but put the Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ into some sort of context. Call me 1-800-743-CBC. Tweet me, Jim Kramer. When the market's as tough as this one, with the Dow advancing 211 points, while the S&P plunged 0.8% and the NASDAQ plummeted 2.05%, completed one of the worst weeks for the S&P since March of 2023 and the worst week for the NASDAQ since November of 2022. The house of pain. Well, right now, there is this real bifurcation going on. we got to explain this. Anything non-tech is doing fabulous. Anything tech... So you can't just wait in and start buying tech and know you uh, need to know your stuff to even buy non-tech here. Namely, who's doing really well and who's doing badly. The reason, it can't just be a relief file where we say, okay, Israel didn't hit the kind of major target in Iran that would provoke instant retaliation, so let's go buy stocks. It can't be that oil pulled back from its highs or that Netflix added subscribers or even that American Express and Procter & Gamble actually reported good numbers when people looked they're bad. In a tough market where the S&P is uncertain, the Nasdaq is disastrous, you need a very specific reason to buy a stock or a sector. And right now, those kinds of reasons are few and far between, except for some old-fashioned, big-cap stocks that have nothing to do with tech. Tech itself is just abysmal. So going into the week where, where we're starting to get some tech earnings, you need to avoid becoming a tech butcher block. I've been saying that you have to let this group come down, cautioning club members on the eve of next week's CNBC Investing Club meeting that just the tech isn't worth this address. The house of pain. It will be someday. Right now, just let it rain. Even though next week is a huge one for earnings, I need to start the game plan right here. Yes, that's right. The end of the week, because this is when we get the personal consumption Expenditures Index, or PCE. Now, this happens to be the Fed's favorite gauge of inflation. If the number's too hot, then any gains we got earlier this week will probably prove to be ephemeral. If the numbers are cool, then most stocks are fair game. I don't know what it'll be, but I do know this. It'll have a significant impact. So even as the market is getting oversold, you should understand it's only the tech market that's getting oversold. The rest of the market's not oversold. So be conscious that the end of next week is when the rubber really hits the road, and you're not protected by the oversold oscillator I always talk about because, frankly, other than tech, things are doing okay if they're big. On my day, good example, we got Verizon which has been a horse ever since that last quarter. CEO Hans Vestberg, he seems to have gotten control of this piece. And you can do worse than own a 6.6% yield with some actual growth to his business. After the close, we hear from two steel companies, Newcore and Cleveland Cliffs. The former's been a phenomenal stock despite the Fed's rate, rate hikes, which is really unusual. The latter's an acquisitive shop that could end up buying U.S. steel if the government successfully blocks the Nippon Steel deal. Hey, that could be good. Both could be very strong. Tuesday, here's another one I kind of like, GM. Do you know that GM is now the second cheapest non-financial stock in the, the entire S&P 500? Thank you, Adam Jonas, for pointing that out. I focus on how well Mary Barr is doing. She's the CEO. And how big the buyback is. It's monstrous. Stay long. We also get results from GE Aerospace and talk about upside. I think it's substantial. CEO Larry Culp has orchestrated a beautiful breakup here. Now he has to show us why GE Aerospace is worth holding on to. And I bet he does it. Next, RTX has made a phenomenal comeback from the abyss of engine trouble. And abyss it fell into because it issued a release about what was basically a recall. And the market smelled catastrophe. It should have spelled opportunity. As the stocks now come all the way back and then some. I think RTX could stall out here unless there's something announced that's big. But you know what? It's a good stock. Now, we spoke to the CEO of Kimberly Clark not that long ago, and he's doing a reorganization to cut costs. He announced it, he talked about it on the show. Now, the stock's been trading higher ever since the appearance, making me think that this could be the beginning of a major run for KMB. I like it both before and after the earnings. I think the turn is real. The best play of Tuesday morning, though, will come from Spotify, which has become a beaten, raised machine. Spotify's all about the subscription revenue, something I love because subscription revenue is so sticky buy it. Tuesday night's about Tesla. Now, we've heard nothing but negatives this quarter. Everything seems weak with the possibility of an actual loss to a dramatic decline in cash flow to even recalls. But maybe Elon Musk can pull a rabbit out of the proverbial hat, and I hope it, it isn't just self-driving. 
Now, there's a lot on the line here for Musk and for the shareholders, and I don't know a way out of Tesla's jam. But Elon Musk is smarter than I am. Wednesday starts with controversy, too, okay? And it's not me. It's what's above me. Boeing. When it talks about how few planes can they produce, I don't know. That's negative. Hey, perhaps they have to buy Spirit Air, uh, air Systems to get control of the fuselage. Well, give us a plan of succession. It cannot be business as usual. That won't cut it. Now, we do have our investing club meeting at noon on Wednesday, and I do have to urge you to join the club. You hear the testimonials. Most say the monthly meeting is worth the price of admission. The most important thing I do, working on it this weekend. Now, uh, after the close, we hear from tech, okay? We hear from meta platforms, the consensus, this will be bang up quarter. Of course, when you get that consensus, it's usually a death sentence for the bulls in tech these days. Mark Zuckerberg does not have to pull rabbit out of the hat. He just has to talk about earnings and forecasts, and they better be good. He's got a lot of levers to push. And if you don't own it yet, you know, like we do own it for the child, it's us much lower basis. I, please wait. Because it could be like Netflix, but the quarter was basically great, but the stock was bad anyway. Who knows? Tech may be so oversold. By the time we get to here, then it might even bounce. Hey, I'll give you another example. Service now. That could bounce. And I have faith that Bill McDermott will deliver. I should call him the delivery man. He's so good. Most people brag about non-consequential AI, not Bill. He just puts up great numbers because his clients trust him to install generative AI platforms and then show them how they can work to benefit their company's bottom line immediately. Chipotle reports, too. I'm confident they'll see the good numbers. The company has integrated robots. That's about all the tech they have there, right? I mean, well, they do have good point of sale. Uh, they've got the best menu with real value, and they own the stores. It's not a franchise model, and, boy, the stores are going up an average unit volume, and they are making a lot of money. Thursday. Thursday, we find out if Caterpillar can continue its run from the low 200s when it put all of those doubting Thomas analysts to shame. Now, this has been a tricky one because the first move is often the wrong move when it comes to CAT. Wait for the conference call before you decide to pull the trigger. And be mindful that this stock might need a breather after its scorching run. Merck's been a horse under Rob Davis, and when he speaks, I bet he tells some surprising stories about new drug applications for all the acquisitions he's made in cardiovascular immunological disease, as well as his anti-cancer portfolio. After the close, it's big, big, big. Microsoft and Alphabet. The former has high expectations, selling for 34 times earnings. The latter goes for 22 times earnings. Why the difference? Because Microsoft's business-to-business -business behemoth with amazing integration of artificial intelligence, including an AI button that's going to be coming to your PC real soon. But Alphabet has got an advertising-based business model, and that's less consistent. We've been scaling out of Alphabet for the Chapel Trust precisely because its stock performs so badly when it reports. Maybe with its new AI product, it can change, but consider yourself warned. Uh, well, you got to be cognizant that it is tech, and tech is bad. Finally, Friday's that PCE day, but it's also a day where we see the oil companies speak, and that's Exxon and Chevron. Did they take advantage of the higher price of the oil from what Rusty Brazil calls the war premium? I don't know if they did, but let me tell you this. They sure should have. Bottom line, it's a tough week to hold together in an atmosphere where sellers seem to blow your head off every time you lift it, especially when it comes to tech. It'll be time to stay cool until we see that cooler inflation number Friday. Without that, you can't afford to trust this market. It will only let you down by the boring old blue chips, not tech, not yet. Chris in New Mexico. Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Hey, Kramer. What's happening, sir? Well, I don't know. Weekend. Happy. What's going on? Uh, just working a lot. All right. What's stock? Costco. Uh, should I keep it? Oh, yeah. Costco, it, actually, I'm a buyer. I buy ball. Costco right here. It's the kind of blue chip stock that you want to own. Let's go to Johnny in Virginia. Johnny? Yes, this is Johnny. All right, Johnny. It's Jim. What's going on? Uh, not much, Jim. Jim. All right. Uh, first, happy birthday to my beloved Kirsten. Second, I want to get your thoughts on Pfizer. Is this a good stock to include in a basket of stocks? No, no, we don't want to own Pfizer. I mean, look, it might bounce. You get the yield. That's fine. If you want a boring old drug stock, just go buy Merck because it ain't boring and still old. That would be the one I would do uh, because, uh, frankly, I think that Pfizer just doesn't have enough in the pipe. Let's hope that CGEN deal starts uh, paying off. Them. But this market is going to stay tough until we, unless we get a cooler inflation meeting next Friday. Remember, the market is tech. Uh, you can't afford tech. Not yet. It's too difficult to trust. I Man, I'm like, the used car sector has been a tough one to figure out, right? So I went on location to one of Carvana's car vending machines earlier today to see how the companies continue to disrupt the space. Then, a year ago, there were some pretty serious reservations about Charles Schwab. Where do they stand now? I'm tracking the company's performance and sharing where I come down. And we covered AAR Corp, one of our small cap names. Should that be a good one? We brought in the CEO. So stay with Kramer.
miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Cramer on X. Have a question? Tweet Cramer. Hashtag Mad Mentions. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.